There is a fifth dimension. A dimension of sound. Damn it, Frank, we tell him to be quiet. I spill my hot cup of Uranus again. A dimension of sight. Hey, Arch, I'm gonna sock you in the puss. A dimension of mind. Nan Adams, is that you? Ah! Ah! Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Yeah, That's the one that The Simpsons had a Treehouse Horror episode on. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Taki yeah. Tina and I'm gonna kill you. Terry Savalas. She killed him like he got killed in fucking Bond. Kind of went out like a chump, honestly. Yeah, he went he went falling down the stairs. He died. I'm like Taki Tina. Guy from Psycho. Your ass is grass. Exactly. All right, all right. So guys, we're back. We're back to talk the fifth dimension of Twilight Zone. I am your host, Nick. And uh, yeah, it's um, a week. Triv, welcome back. Welcome Thanks. back into the fifth dimension. I know you were dying, and I think you had like uh, James Cordonitis or something like that. I don't know oh, exactly what was happening, but yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna stick you, you in a week. cave because you're 86 years old. Oh, wait, we've already got another person here that lives in the cave. Huh. Me, I know I can do oh, the robot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um. Welcome back. Uh, like I said, we 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 pressed on without you. Unfortunately, you did miss a, a fantastic episode of The Twilight Zone. Uh, I know. I which know. Uh, I got to ask you before we introduce <laughs> our other guests. What did you think of Living Doll? I thought it was excellent. Um, Telly Savalas, quite the character in that. Um, the fact that he undid it himself is always interesting. Like, I'm not your father. It would have been funny if that had showed up in like, you know, Empire Strikes Back or something. Um, <laughs> but uh <laughs> The, the doll looked pretty old to start with. Like, it definitely didn't look like a new doll. So I'm thinking they went to a rummage sale and got themselves a cursed Annabelle doll. Um, but no, I definitely deserved its place. Um, excellent, excellent episode. So classic by, by Twilight. Yep. Classic by Twilight Zone standards and generally. Exactly. Um, but of course, Alex was in your place and she she did you she did you justice by keeping Jacob in line. And <laughs> did she keep her stuff. hands on her on her hips the whole time? Uh, she sure did. I thought Yay. that would be somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got new narratives now. <laughs> oh my god. Um, but yeah, Trev, welcome back. Like I said, you're missed. We missed you. Dog. Um, uh, maybe not. I don't know. It is a Twilight Zone. You never know what happens in this crazy world. True. Uh, but Jacob, you're back. Also, you were here as usual. I don't think you've ever missed an episode, so I think you. Uh, uh, I know you missed one. It was one, but you guys didn't record. Well, I mean, I didn't miss it. To be fair, that Yay! was Christmas time, so yeah, you didn't miss anything. It was Christmas time, so it was when we were supposed to talk about um part of the, one of the segments from the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, I can't remember. What was it was like it was the um, whatever episode it was. Yeah, it was the like gonna be a Christmas one. episode. What's that? We're gonna talk about the cornfield one. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which yeah, I really yeah. like, and I was looking forward to that. I don't remember what happened and why I couldn't, but yeah. Nope, never missed any of No, those. I think you I think you fell asleep or something like that. You were tired. I mean, you have like 18 kids, so I mean I get it. Oh but... yeah. I like I was I yeah, I passed out and just like woke up in the middle of the night and you guys had sent me all these messages like, where are you at? And I was like, Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Other than that, you've only missed like 18 episodes that you weren't on because you weren't part of our podcast yet. So it was nine. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Don't oh, don't man. don't uh don't enlarge him without meaning to be enlarged. <laughs> it's a per chance to dream. I'm sorry, Trev. It's my <laughs> per chance to dream. Yeah. Gosh. Anyways, anyways, anyways. We have another person who apparently is, you know, in a cave. He's grown his beard out. He's been on the podcast before, but I think he's been waiting for so long that he just he he's not eating because all his food's contaminated at this point. Because we were supposed to send him like a refrigerator, but it was uh you know. I don't know, contaminated with salmonella or some nonsense. But of course, that person is Rob, who has, uh, I can't remember when you were last on, Rob, but welcome back. Either way, I know you came on. It's been late. 84 years. <laughs> oh so That's when I was first line. born, you were last on. Yeah, yeah. It's Titanic. I think it was like season two. I mean, yeah, it's been a long time. time. I was on. Well, to be fair, like you actually. Or three have a legitimate job where you legitimately uh, go places 
Yeah, not like us folks that don't well, have legitimate season jobs. Three. Season Hold three up. lasted two years. Hold <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, Rob, see see what happens when you come on. You have to deal with legitimacy issues. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. No, no. Yeah, you're you've always been very busy, but when you come on, it's always it's always fun. So welcome back, Rob. Welcome Happy back. Happy to be um, out of the cave. Yeah. Right. Right. You know what? For being um, in a cave for eighty-four years, you look really good. Your beard is your beard is really trimmed up. You look healthy. Mm-hmm. That yeah. hat is fabulous. This bad rash that. I yeah. have. <laughs> 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 oh, oh man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Florida will do that to you, Rob. Florida will yeah. do that to you. It gives you the worst rashes. I swear to God. God, the bird flu um, has changed the way that it appears. Florida man, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's called the Ron DeSantis flu. It makes you makes you red and stupid. Are you calling <sighs> your? Are you calling him stupid? I, I just said it's the Ron DeSantis what? flu. Yeah. It could be somebody else named Ron DeSantis. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. Got, we, you don't we, know. We... <laughs> uh, anyways, it's a long night, folks. I've been busy for two days. Drove very far to watch Deadpool and Wolverine. It's been a long trip. Um. Anyways, uh, so today we're talking an episode of the Twilight Zone. Imagine that, you know, we could talk about anything else, but we're talking about the Twilight Zone. This episode, I specifically asked Jason, Jason, God damn it, I've lost my turn. I, I'm losing my mind. I've asked Jacob, not Jason. First, I called your son a daughter. Now I'm calling you Jason. I do have a lot of daughters, so that's understandable. I get that a lot. <laughs> nah, nah. I, I did that once. At, I was working at Blockbuster, and there was this um, lady that had her back turned. And I went up to her. I'm like, can I help you, sir? And the lady turned around. He's like, I'm a woman, please. It's my <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a woman. I'm like, oh, damn. I'm like, can I help you? She's like, why don't you have any copies of The Patriot? I'm like, I don't know. Go rent Perfect Storm or something. Um, that's those true story, two are synonymous. The they came out at the same time on video. It was That's actually a true story. I got yelled at because we didn't have enough copies of The Patriot. but. Hmm. You, you, know you get yelled at for not having enough copies of something. Right. Least. You know, very, you know, that very well, Rob, you know that from GameStop. So, yeah, you know, you oh. get yelled at because yeah, you but he got yelled games. at by his superiors. We get yelled at by the customers. Yeah. GameStop <sighs> just yells at the employees. Well, that too. Yeah, that too. But, I mean, it's um, better than being yelled at for not having enough copies of things. Um. Yeah. I got yelled not at enough. as to why we didn't have a back room. Like a, oh my god! A porn room. <laughs> no one really yelled. It was just like more of a complaint session. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "This um, is blockbuster video. You know that, right? We're not like some local joint." You know, that's what I said. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's a family store, right? They're like, I don't care. <laughs> like, where's this? Actually, guy asked me too, but <laughs> it's a family I store. Sure I put up copies of E to Mama Ten BN and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> We're respectable. You see that copy of Salo in the corner there? <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know if we else. had that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, so I specifically asked Jacob not to like look up this uh, episode's ending because I know Jacob. You said as I was editing today when we're recording, I I, I said to J- Jacob's like I'll probably forget it anyways. But the reason I said that is because I think the ending to this episode is one of the more memorable memorable endings to a twilight zone episode and it doesn't mean it's like the best ending to the series but i think it's one that i've that has made me watch this episode 35 40 times now i've watched this episode a lot so i know this episode pretty pretty well unlike you know a lot of other episodes but it's season five episode seven called old man in the cave um directed by alan crossland jr written by ross serling Stars, of course, James Coburn, John Anderson, Josie Lloyd, John Craven, John Marley. A lot of Johns in this episode, apparently. Um, you know, they apparently had to use the restroom because there was a lot of Johns. Um, <laughs> <laughs> production code 2603, <laughs> air date November 8th, 1963. <laughs> 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 Short story by <laughs> Henry Selsler. Um, I try. I try. But um, with that said, Jacob, I got to ask you the ending. Did you see it coming? Yes. That's what she said. Did you really see it coming? Saw it coming from almost the beginning. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, well, we'll get is, no, seen, I, 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 I you've just, seen I don't the know. Future Rama figured... episode about Snoo Snoo and Fembot, you, or Femputer, you kind of know what's coming. It wasn't none of that. It was no. the way he read when he when he read the thing in the beginning. 
Also true. The, uh, as weather. soon as he read that, I was like, because I, I did not remember anything about this episode. I went in totally blind and he came down. The old man in the cave, he sent us a letter. And he read the thing, the way he read it off. I was like, and yeah, it was. And like the whole time I was like, this is, it's definitely that or something. Because I was also keeping in mind, I was like, it's 1964. I mean, they existed, but in what Well, technically capacity? it's 1974, so. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, when it was made. Yeah, I'm, I know. I'm just. I, and I, I have thoughts. <laughs> I have thoughts that go beyond that. But yes, as far as like, did yeah. I see it coming? I, I, I like immediately. I was like, see it coming. Excellent. Interesting. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> cry now. <laughs> Trip comes back and Jacob kisses the end. It's so sad. I'm yeah, not some prophet not... either. It's not like I catch the end of these things all the time. Every now and then I do, but like yeah. that one was like right. the most immediate. But I got thoughts on it. I got, I, I did. Yeah, we'll go. Ace we'll Magazine and IMDb had thoughts too. Oh, apparently. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. It's not a top 10 episode in any matter, form, or fashion, but. I, you know, I've seen the episode quite a bit and I really liked it. So it's, um, it's one of those, Alex didn't like it when I said it last week, but I, I feel it's like a guilty pleasure episode where it's just, it's so much fun and entertaining that I feel when the ending happens, I feel it actually works, but I don't know. I don't know if you guys agree. Um, uh, we'll get into it, but I mean, Rob, as somebody who, you know, has seen the twilight zone, but hasn't seen a lot, I'm assuming a lot of them recently, what was it like to go into this episode? Did you see the ending coming? Did you find the episode interesting? What do you think overall? I I don't know if I saw this episode before. I didn't I don't remember mm. watching it. So it may have either I saw it once a long time ago and I don't remember it, uh, or this was my first time, but like I I didn't remember it going in. And I think like Jacob at the reading of the weather report. I was like, yeah. okay, I think I know what's going on. Like that didn't really take away from the the story. Like I, it felt like um one of those episodes where I know a lot of other episodes have tackled the same sort of like mob rule type mm -hmm. stuff, but this one felt like one of those episodes that has inspired a lot of other films and stories that have come along. You know, military or some group comes to town and tries to take over by force and overcome their you know this community and their beliefs yeah. and things like that so i i really liked it I, like you said it's not probably my favorite episode but it's definitely yeah. a good one yeah it's um it's an episode that is i think interesting in the fact of like as rod sterling has done in the past he looks into the nature of humans as like a, a group kind of in a um herd herd mentality so when one person does one thing it tends to follow everyone and i think that's very prevalent here i also think and we'll talk about it that i, I told you trip that i think it has a little bit of like the ten commandments vibe to it going to it just on who goldsmith is and what he represents uh but we'll, we'll talk about that but like Triv, you mean like uh, Sodom and Gomorrah kind of situation um maybe a little bit because like mm. it, it made me it felt like he was Iron like I, I'm not saying this is exactly what happened but I'm Gold like it Gold. felt like yeah Goldsmith was coming down from the mountain holding the two plates or whatever and the people yeah. in the crowd once the 15 the, commandments so, yeah exactly yeah, 15, <laughs> <laughs> shall the thou shall not uh covet James Coburn uh Coburn you know that type of thing there definitely um, felt like a faith versus mm -hmm. the easy way like a government like non-faith entity coming in and trying to buy your like subservience with things yeah give you free stuff and take you away from your, you know a belief right. system turn your back which on is what your yeah. faith and and see what happens fuck around yeah. and find out <laughs> that was that was this episode in spades i wrote that down what was that again oh the fuck around find out it's very oh, strong in yeah, this episode. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I, I thought uh, that too. It's interesting you say that because, like, as I was watching that, I was like, "This is kind of like a parallel to like a a, a a loose parallel to something like Sodom and Gomorrah, or you know, mm -hmm. with the wasn't that the one with the gold in? No, uh, yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah was it was nuked from basically like nuked meteors. Space. Yeah, like if you talk if you talk to conservatives, they'll say that it was bombed out of existence because of homosexuality when actually by the bible at least from what i remember oh. it was like they were inhospitable they were really rude they yeah, stole yeah, and yeah. Did all that kind of shit. Right. it What's was kind one? of overall bad shit 
The well, gold the statue one... was Moses. They were in the desert. Moses was off. He was off doing the Ten Commandments. And they started worshiping the gold. The, right. The... They, yeah, they melted down that's... all their gold and made the statue. Yeah. Well, While that's what Moses I was saying. Moses was doing the Ten Commandments. They turned their back. Right. Because yeah. yeah. to be fair, like in the beginning, they're all following Moses. Like I said, I don't really believe in this nonsense, but I, I go for the Charlton Heston movie, but they're following him. And all of a sudden <laughs> they have this one guy that just like corrupts the absolute of the individual and yeah here comes okay, uh, right, moses yeah. with his 15 commandments which he drops in the middle of you know here's my 15 commandments oh uh, no no now it's oh. 13 <laughs> 10 no then you were right History when you said world. 10 commandments then yeah you're right I, I got the two mixed up that's that I, I thought the exact same thing the 10 commandments. i do think that they did they describe it um i think in the trivia they talk about it being sort of like sodom and gomorrah because you know, because of what happens, like they do, there's a scene where they're Actually partying they it up, it. and yeah, yeah exactly. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, but with that, I asked you, Triv. I mean, do you think like that as well? She said that's it's one take, um, or you? Not she said you said it's one take. I'm like curious, like what you thought, and like where did you see kind of what was your feeling? I mean, I think you could take it as you know, Rob, Rob had a good one um, about kind of government entity versus not. You kind of get the shit stir guy that comes in and breaks up the the thing. Um, one of the reviews that I looked at kind of said it best for me. Um, they talked about like faith versus like the things that people are able to know. Like people, they, they were said that they should go on faith with this thing. But if they had known what was going on, it really wasn't that big of a secret as to what all that stuff was coming from. Um, mm-hmm. But it is kind of that, you know trusting something like it's kind of conspiracy theories versus you know what's in front of you and what's worked kind of a deal too if you wanted to go that route Interesting. like everything kind of, everyone kind of does their thing and then all of a sudden someone comes in and says well you know and then people are like ah hey here's a guy with a different <laughs> opinion let's do the thing ah. and they were well, the trivia the what's uh that? the soldiers or i guess their soldiers come in also they have the line <laughs> about that they've been to other towns and they talked about how different towns were worshiping like other random things. Yeah. And like, yeah. they all had their beliefs and they're all like, yeah. And it's all like bogus and everything. So they're coming in from this perspective of like trying to take over and power and undo everybody's beliefs. Whoa. And up to that point, it was all bogus, but then they come here and this old man yeah. in the cave yeah. actually has a, well, that's the funny part. Like, um, you see that in a lot of episodes where there's a lot. We saw that in one of the what's the one where the guy is he like runs the they're on a planet. Um, what's the season four episode? Oh, the one uh, tomorrow we leave or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's like uh, that. And like, what, shelter, like that, where he has control and somebody comes right. and takes so takes his or challenges his uh control. Part it was partially like that, I think. Respect my yeah. authority. He didn't. He goes um, in a different direction. Right. Like, yeah. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Do what you're do. A very different direction. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but like you can see this, you can see this um mentality even today. I mean, it's very much a human mentality where we tend to fall into these like categories of like different herd mentalities and stuff like that, you know, whether it be politics or movie watching or um I don't know, deciding whether pineapple pizza is a good thing or not. It's, and which it you know, is it's just uh, 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 Rob, Rob, please tell me you don't like pineapple pizza. No. Yeah, you thank know, you. You constantly bring this up, Nick. I think that you're the one that's got the issue. I think you're in denial about it being good, despite the fact that it's really good. Hey, Rob doesn't like it either, so there's a 50-50 shot of that not being true. You know what? You um, damn Florida people. I blame you being from Florida. Yeah, I'm not from Florida, though. From Ohio. You live in Florida, I'm from though. Kate. We're from the Midwest, I guess. Well, I am exactly. too, but I have uh, taste. You guys are just silly. <laughs> The silly billies. Clearly, um, I'm from the uh, the superior state. Right. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Oh, you corn. That's right. Um, <laughs> no. Damn right, joking. bitch. But, but, <laughs> but, Jacob, what about you? I mean, like, did you? You're usually the one that differs from most of us when it comes to episodes. Like, did you like this episode, or did you? Do you have problems with it? Because I know you're more vocal on certain episodes than others. You know. No, that's not a bad thing. I'm just saying, like, it's nice to have like a different scene of opinion sometimes. So I don't know. I don't know where you're gonna head. So it's it's nice to have. I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm like destroying Jacob tonight for no reason. I'm sorry. No. Um, uh. So rude. Yeah. Well, like, like I mentioned, I I saw the twist coming from 
like literally almost the very beginning of the episode when he came down. Try not to ruin the twist for those viewers and listeners. Who uh, know it 60 yet. years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, even though I knew the twist, even though right, I was positive, like when it, when it happened and they kept on referring to it as like this ambiguous kind of like old man, I was like, mm-hmm. And the way he read it and everything, I knew, I felt like 99% sure. I just did not question it the whole time. I was like, yep, that's what it is. Even though I knew that and I felt fairly confident I knew what was going on, I really liked this episode. I thought it was still really good. Um, it had a bunch of other themes in it, like we talked about, like stuff from the Ten Commandments and a bunch of like faith issues and or, or exploring faith <clears throat> and stuff like that. And while, I mean, I can't say I'm the most faithful person, that, that's not right. Whatever. I'm not the most religious person for damn sure, but I do appreciate, I know like humankind is, and I, I do appreciate like seeing those... Uh, exploratory like stories that look into people and faith and how they deal with that and uh it was just really well written and uh entertaining it didn't it never lulled uh uh even as it went on admittedly like i can't say that i knew exactly how it was going to end from the very beginning but i knew what the twist was going to be and then as it went on i knew pretty much every beat like as it was going on i was like yeah this is going to happen now that's what happened in the very end i was like He's probably going to have a chat with somebody as they're, especially when it shows that. So it's like, I was never surprised, but I was still very entertained. I really, really liked this episode. That was, um, you've been saying not a top 10. I don't know if it's top 10, we'd have to look at the list, but I mean, I think it's on up there. I really, I mean, I thought this is a, a great written episode. And I think as we go along, we're going to find a lot more uh, nuances to talk about within it. And a lot of subtext. I think the, the subtext is what made it interesting because I think oh, yeah. it made it more relatable. And too, yeah, you, you look at this and it it definitely like it's it's one of those great episodes that does most Twilight Zone is, you know, good at all times. You know, you can you can relate it to damn near any it's evergreen, I guess. But I think yeah. this one a little more than the others, just because there's always going to be that thing that drives that that people look to for their information, whether that be a good source or a bad source, because the way this is pe- pegged by anyone other than Goldsmith, it's kind of a dubious thing because it's the unknown but at the mm-hmm. end it turns out that it's it was the right thing um well, so it kind of plays with the 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 sides i do think and, and something I, I wanted to mention that ties into that it is kind of a, a, a dubious thing even to him i mean uh, that that's one of the reasons i don't like sometimes i'll see a, a twist coming a mile away and i'm like that was lazy and that's why i know what's going on i don't feel like this one was i mean i look back at the time when it was written in 19. 19- 64 pre-1964 uh this twist this this thing that we're going to be getting to it there wasn't a lot known about it overall they were kind of mysterious and magical and the people didn't have nearly the knowledge that they do that we do now so when he like when he read that thing off which was the big thing that tipped me off like from the jump I hear that and I say that sounds like this and uh other people back in 1964 they may not have that ingrained in them they may not think this is how that sounds so then i don't think it was lazy writing for the time i think it's just times Mm. have changed it's been 60 years well that's look at it that's a right that's actually a good question um i'm sorry if i cut you off rob but that's a good question do you think knowing the twist like you did do you think it's because we live in an age where that twist is not as uh, surprising like it feels like some i mean this this episode technically takes place 10 years in 1960 1974 but the the, the thing is dealing with what's that no. <laughs> right right but yeah even in 74, I, I love the... it's not like they had a huge like general yeah. knowledge they didn't have like a huge yeah. general knowledge of it then either i wouldn't say until maybe like the well like no i mean like knowledge like the late 90s for a lot of people and even then it was kind of like whoa well, though, I meant like for you in 2024, do you think it is just more obvious than it probably it was for them? I mean, yeah, like we can see yeah. that because me personally, like the first time I saw this, I saw this back when uh, Rob, you and I were in uh, a film school or whatever. And I started getting really into rewatching the Twilight Zone again. And I, I, I remember watching this episode and being really surprised by the ending because most of the endings to the series are surprising but i think the idea of like what this what this episode in the end is doing is really shocking because it's not something you think about you know they usually have characters and then this goes a completely different direction it has of course the twilight zone ending but it's just like 
it kind of took me back and kind of surprised me, I guess is the easiest way to put it. I think even back when we were in film school, the, without trying to spoil the ending yet, um, wasn't as prevalent in day-to-day lives as it is now. And yeah, that's of, true. I mean, yeah. When, when you look at it now, if you were to place this episode into like more like modern era times, then it's almost still relevant with, everything going on like where things are going at this time with it's kind of vague without I, spoiling it but well i mean i i, I this is kind of spoil it. if you got how many of you guys have seen i know trip i think i showed you the episode you guys watch black mirror a little bit okay you know what this episode reminds me of san junipiero a yeah. little bit that that concept like i think that's what kind of today's um society on, is that a secret in that episode it, it, it's not it's, it is at first but as it slowly moves forward it, the idea of what san junipiero is is slowly revealed i'm just saying that it's similar to here where it starts out one specific way and then moves into this very um interesting kind of how we view the future how the future controls us and will use us in certain ways how it can help us but also deter us you know goldsmith is an individual who he's a guy that has the best intentions for his community but he's also keeping them kind of in the dark about what's going on i'm curious if like these individuals if they found out what what it truly was would they've acted at less harshly back in the day i, I don't know it's like a fear situation I where it feels like it's still kind of mad it was it was like magic back then like oh how yeah, true. things pop out and they're like oh it's like the gospel because it's almighty you know well it's also you know 10 years after nuclear war you know yeah. any ability to anything that they would have been around that would have you know had that practical side uh, or pl- practical usage would have been kind of in the long past um yeah, the cars read... were in good shape too after that nuclear <laughs> war <laughs> the this one is like the, a jericho the... situation they weren't in oh, the blast 100%. Zone. <laughs> <laughs> The one review I read, um, which I referenced before, um, they talked about how the one thing that this episode had one way or the other was um, if the people would have had a better understanding, like had that knowledge of what was going on and understood it as compared to it being like this dark and mysterious thing that they didn't understand, it probably Mm. would have had a different outcome. But you also would have had the idea that what would have happened or what happened probably wouldn't have happened in the way that it happened. Yeah. Yeah. That it's interesting to think about the longer you wait, the longer you put it off, the worse it gets, I guess. Oh, yeah. And I think they I mean, were built up, their rage was built up from the soldiers against whatever the old man in the cave was to begin with because they were already turning from it. And then they see it and it's like frightens them and they just go on the attack. Whereas I think prior to them coming in, if he was like, what, what was his name, Goldsmith? Yep. Yeah. If he were to say, well, I'm going to explain what this is, then they may come at it from a more, I guess, like reasons standpoint. But then again, it's like if they see that as their, if that's like their religion and you're trying to like show the man behind the curtain, Mm -hmm. you might get a pushing back on the the old man. (laughs) You might get people pushing back. (laughs) Right. Um, I, I was just gonna say that old man hates those cans. That's all I could think about through the entire episode is that the jerk moment. He hates these cans because he's telling him not to eat the can of food and stuff like that. Um, but actually, uh, John Anderson, who plays Goldsmith, was in four episodes of The Twilight Zone. He was Gabriel in a passage for Trumpet. He was the captain in Odyssey of Flight Thirty Three, and he played Dietrich. And of late, I think of Cliffordville. I think it was Alex's favorite episode. If I remember right. <laughs> Dietrich. I, he looked familiar. I was trying to Dieter. figure out why. Yeah, he was in a lot of. He was in a lot of <laughs> westerns like Gunsmoke and stuff. But nice. He's got that face. Would you like to touch my monkey? <laughs> <laughs> now we dance. <laughs> you know, actually, I think of, I think of, about it. Wasn't Gunsmoke similar to like? Um, What's that show on that show on in England that's been on for like 85 years now? Oh, um, the one that Coronation everybody's Street. on. 
Coronation Street? Is it Coronation? What was or East Enders? Like, East Enders. East Enders. I think Gunsmoke was like was East Enders. Gunsmoke like East Enders. <laughs> it was on for Gunsmoke was, was on like for like sixty five years. Okay, like everybody was like a Gunsmoke. themes and like no. <laughs> Gunsmoke's like Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have bars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so old man in the cave. You know what? Fuck it, Jacob. Let's do the opening narration. Went, oh my god, he actually remembered. Fuck it. 45 minutes. No, I, it's not that I didn't remember. <laughs> I just like the last week's episode was like 45 minutes into the episode, and I'm sure Alex will definitely re- remind us of that. So we'll, yeah. do, we'll do the do the 74 opening narration. Let's see here. Uh yeah. It's not too bad. Which I already knew that because I came prepared. <laughs> Absolutely. What you're looking at is a legacy that man itself left to himself. A decade previous, he pushed his buttons and a nightmarish moment later woke up to find that he had set the clock back a thousand years. His engines, his medicines, his sciences were burned in a mass tomb covered over by the biggest gravedigger of them all, a bomb. And this is the Earth, ten years later, a fragment of what was once a whole and remnant of what was once a race. The year is 1974, baby, and this is the Twilight Zone. And cars and horses living (laughs) together, mass hysteria. James James, uh, Corden's in this episode, huh? Uh Uh-huh. Isn't it? Hopefully he's the one one of the ones that dies horribly. Is this Trish's favorite episode? But James uh, Coburn, Coburn, Coburn is yep. or Coburn. <laughs> well, I tell you, you know, he's a real, he's, he played like he just has the look of a complete asshole, doesn't he? Like he played the roles really well. He's uh, what lifts this movie like um, Terry Savalas last week. He kind of lifts this episode up from being what could be like um, a very cheesy episode, to be fairly honest. But I think it's um, that when you have an interesting, I guess. Villain's not the right word, but he like an interesting adversary. Oh, he's a I villain. Guess. No, he's no, absolutely know. a villain. But I like with that. Like, I didn't want to use the word villain because it's you can call it that, but it's not necessarily the best way to describe. You know, yeah. I mean, he's part of the military, and he, because the military's kind of dissolved at this point, he kind of he's like he's like um, Negan in Walking Dead. He's just kind of a a bad because he talks about about how he like wasn't he part of something else when he was younger or. Well, he went Before to college. All, went to college. Yeah, he went to so college. Now he's, he's a He's like trying mercenary. to start his own like government of with those little towns in the area. I mean, he should have started with uh was it Burt Reynolds? Who else was Burt Lancaster? Who else was in this series? Jack Klugman, oh, Lee uh, Marvin. J- or, uh, Charles Bronson. Your favorite Charles person. Bronson. No shirt like, Charles it, Bronson. Yep, no shirt Charles right. Bronson. Which is, you know, Trip's favorite. Um, with some badasses in this series, and now you have James Coburn in the episode, and you know, start a a posse of. I'm surprised they weren't all part of the security force or whatever the mercenaries. Um, all we I don't need know, is I Alien mean, Jesus from that other weird episode that we ranked really low, right? The other Western, Alien Jesus. Trips. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna make a movie called Alien Jesus. There's probably a movie a, already um, called Alien Jesus. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I it's a, um, I want to beat Jesus and Alien Jesus, please. I mean, I can I can make that happen. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for my close up, Mister Bill. Make my uh my screen debut. <laughs> uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, I don't know. This episode basically opens up. It's these individuals who are being kind of dictated by an old man in the cave goldsmith um is up there talking to the old man and they want to eat the food but they're worried that the food what's that did you say will smith yes i said will smith did i i thought it said goldsmith oh okay i probably said will smith i thought you said will smith talking to the guy up in the cave i was like i didn't get that reference (laughs) oh no yeah he got slapped in the cave by the old man the old man was chris rock yeah, he slapped the old man. <laughs> uh, but they're waiting for Goldsmith to come back to see if the food can be eaten. And, of course, that is not going to happen because Goldsmith comes back and goes, 
you know, the old man hates these cans and they're all radiated and don't you will die something. a terrible, terrible right. death. They don't have Napoleon Dynamite tossing tater tot casserole at uh, at a llama going, right. dude. Come on, Tina. You stupid. What did you say? Tina, stupid lard. Fat cow. I mean, fat lard. <laughs> <laughs> We'd God. be better off eating each other. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that i thought was interesting um, yeah. they didn't um obviously they talk about the fact that i mean it's you're in post-apocalyptic lands and such and obviously they're they're not you know eating you know giant meals or anything but i'm glad they didn't go the route of oh my god we're starving we have to eat this or we'll die i mean yeah, they didn't look too I, bad. apparently I they um apparently they watched independence day because they didn't know where to plant the crops at they got a whole damn field of crap it kind of feels like it could be the start of a Mad Max world, like with the the roving gangs of militia guys mm. coming in and like the first Mad the Max. Horse. Yeah. I mean, w- what do you guys think about like the fact that nuclear war only 10 years on has basically decimated all but 500 people, apparently, from uh, the shores of Buffalo, New York to the lands of Atlanta, Georgia. It, yeah, I think there's um, more than the 500 people. Chicago. What's that? I think there's more than 500 people. He's just talking about between there. Well, no, that's what I'm thinking. Like, it, it's almost like a road, the road scenario, the the book, the road, where there's pockets of people, but they're suffering and they don't know, like, if their next meal is going to be, book. you know, it's a very uplifting book. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very uplifting book. <sighs> very, 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 you know, I don't know. Um, but yeah, 500 people between, I mean, between Buffalo, New York, and Atlanta, and there's only 500 people is pretty crazy to think about. It, um, Makes me wonder like where these nukes went off and stuff like that. But I mean, these people look like they're part of the Dust Bowl. They're part of the 20s and 30s. And I think that's intentional because I don't think uh, 1960s view of 1970s was not what they thought it was going to be. I don't know what you guys Very thought. Fallout. But yeah, the, I mean, the styles didn't the styles didn't feel like people that were frozen necessarily from the 60s. Yeah, it's weird. I, I don't know. I don't know what to think about it because it's weird how. You know, these townsfolk don't even look like they're dressed from the 60s. They look like they're dressed from the 40s or something like that, which until the um, the militia come in, it's really interesting because, you know, if there wasn't for Rod Sterling's kind of um, here's 1974, you kind of would figure maybe there was, you know, uh, like 50s or something like that. Yeah. I mean, that during the, you know, there were during the um, Cuban Missile Crisis or something like that. But I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think on this story as it moves along and, you know, introduced a major French played by James Coburn and stuff like that? I think they did a good, yeah, I think they did a good job with that. I mean, you know, you, you have a a group of people that are, you know, relatively even keeled, but you know, there's always that chance to, you know, push the balance one way or the other because of their, I mean, their state is kind of tenuous, obviously, you know, and all it takes is that one person. And I guess you could say that about any time, you know, what is stability at any time? You know, you just get that one person to, to, you know, change the balance slightly and then, you know, things go all kitty wampus. So um, I think they did a good job kind of introducing that and, and working in those bits. I think, yeah, but... I wonder if it also kind of shows like the, what is he a major that comes in? Is he ma- uh, whatever? Yeah, major, yeah, major French. French. He's uh, way more charismatic than Goldsmith is. Mm. And so I think that, maybe kind of leads to like this charismatic personality coming in to, you know, persuade this group of people who's like set and following this guy Goldsmith and the, right. the weather reports from the cave. Well, that that actually leads me to Jacob. Do you think uh, Major French is bad? He seems like somebody who set out on to do something good and then maybe get power hungry. Either that or he got here to this place and he has just been through all these other places that have, you know, he's rolled up and they're like, like he said, like there was these people that were like hooping and hollering at the sky and people that were worshiping some statue. Like he's just had enough of it. And he's kind of like, look, people, we got to, we got to get shit back together. And I'm the man to do it. I never, I didn't, is it just supposed to be him and his little crew of people? I thought he was more of like a diplomat. They, like a, of, of I think like he said something he worked bigger. for somebody. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, he was like I think it was bigger. somebody from California or something. Ooh, the NCR. Yeah, the NCR. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. It's like it, it feels like um, 
one hand is controlling the other in major French's, you know, trying to He's get somewhere great. with uh, that's true. Like, but I think it's always funny how, you know, the that one person, like once again, we go back to Negan, who is like, you know, an individual who was a teacher and all that stuff, and then he became like this Spoilers. militia man. Well, yeah, for Fantasy. a show that's now ended, but <laughs> um, I, major off, French here. I stopped watching that show right before he, or right as he got on it. So, oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Next thing you well, there, there's a guy named Negan, and he, and he <laughs> right, or right. Kid does. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, maybe the kid like dinosaurs or something like that. I don't know. Maybe they wanted to write. Maybe like gigantic apes. Who knows? Um, but no, Major French seems like a guy who just kind of joined a militia, but was a guy going through college and when the nukes dropped which it's interesting to see that this takes place in a town that's not named but they named buffalo and atlanta so who knows where this town is maybe it is out in california town with no name yeah, yeah. May, where where's the where's the uh where's the man with no name i don't know he's out back mm-hmm. he's out he's out back he's out back taking a poop basically um, outback steak yeah that's it. right right he's out back at outback steakhouse in the right. title, the name. I think this episode is um like there's some episodes where the 30 minute seems perfect for the format of Twilight Zone. Like some of the hour long mm. episodes you watch and you're like, okay, this was too much. But I think this episode probably would have benefited from going to an hour because like when they get to the point where he mentions he went to college, I feel like there's a lot more story. Like this this particular story i feel like could even be an entire season worth of like interesting characters like what what's going on in this world like the nuclear Mm -hmm. bomb and like the different people and the factions and and what uh, happened after the the reveal in the end yeah between the reveal and the ultimate end of it probably could have been more there too yeah so i feel like this is a story that could have benefited from expanding more and i think developing i think they probably were trying to start pushing the major to be sympathetic in a sense when they were mentioning, you know, he went to college and he was trying to be more relatable, but I think they just didn't have time to really push that. And so they just had to show a little bit and then really quickly get to him winning over the town. That would have been really interesting Um, because having, especially since I kind of knew where it was going, if we had gotten that reveal and there was still more to go and being able to like explore the people a bit more. And, you know, if it got us more invested in some of these side characters, such as the major beyond him just being an asshole. And then what ultimately happens probably would have been even more impactful. Especially if like this may be sort of spoilerish, but Mm -hmm. if they had more time, they could maybe start going into does technology play a role in like they're all living in a society without technology and technology led to the downfall of their society from the bomb going off. So does that play a role in their reaction at the end that they're now saying we were governed by this thing, this old man in a cave who was the Terminator? <laughs> exactly. It should have been played by Christian Slater. No, what I, what I was saying was um, it's interesting because the reason is this is a guy, Major French is a guy who, as it explains, um, is there to organize the region and society that can be rebuilt. But as Goldsmith kind of fears that French is there to strip them of food and strip them of uh, their their humanity and stuff like that. And he instills into them this kind of doubt about what Goldsmith is doing, because as we learn, Goldsmith has a particular reason for why he does what he does. But it's interesting to see how one particular individual with enough swagger, with enough charisma, with enough, you know, drive to move down a road and get to a eventual uh, society can influence and kind of switch the the trajectory of a uh, of people. It's really it's really interesting. I think Joe James Coburn does a really nice job the with the help of. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you guys think. Well, like, like you say that it's kind of the swagger thing. Um, I remember just reading a thing where this random guy walked in to some place, claimed um, kind of like James Monroe as his like great 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 grandfather, 
and actually mm-hmm. got people to hand over a huge amount of his estate, whatever was, you know, whoever was supposed to have it, just because he was someone that could play the role. It's like, and this was, you know, back in the, whatever, early 20th century, late 19th, but. Like, kind of elaborate, and like, you see, I guess I'm confused. Oh, he just, just the fact that he he just walked in, like he owned the place, said, oh, by the way, I'm, you know, James Monroe's, you know, great, great grandson, mm-hmm. you know. Stock it, strong. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Come, you know, I'm, I want to, you know, you know, claim my earnings. Right. Be in life. Mm. <laughs> what I'm saying it's... is that if there's good bullshitters, and this yeah, guy was that... an exceptional bullshitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, it's really interesting because I love that they go up to the 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 mountain or the cave, and Rob's just sitting in there laughing as they're trying to use a grenade to destroy the the door or whatever. Like a big metal door. <laughs> Rob hears it and he goes, "Oh, I must have farted or something." I mean, it's just like. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just find it funny. It's it, it's that idea of like not willing to accept, like not willing to accept that maybe you don't really should be knowing what's up there. That maybe what's being told to you is the best co- outcome because they drink and they eat all the food and they party and apparently the two guys are gonna have sex with a woman because they're leading her off into yeah. some weird place um i don't know I like how these people it, like held out all that time for like 10 years mm-hmm. or maybe not the whole team but a long time and it just took this one dude to come in and shake mm-hmm. their faith in something yeah it's like hey guys and, and like they're we got the food and they're like uh, and then one dude busts out we got booze fuck yeah let's party bitches <laughs> <laughs> it does make me but question a... why 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 would you keep all that stuff like if you had determined that it wasn't good stuff why would you, you keep it where are you gonna what are you gonna do with it I mean, something. they had it in a behind a door that said contaminated. Oh, did they? I didn't notice. Yeah, when he bust out, it said contaminated on the door. Well, the question I have is like, wouldn't canned food survive a radiation scare? Like, well, they isn't said that the that whole point of canned food? The lady said that it was uh, canned before, but then later mm. on, I can't remember why the context, but somebody said it was canned after or it may yeah. have been or... it was it possibly oh. was, it was canned after was canned there after. was no way to tell where it was canned at because yeah. it didn't have the right light. well that's the other thing like they survived a, a nuclear blast but they're not in bad shape you know you would think like these people would be horribly scarred you know because radiation just doesn't stop at a wall it, it spreads once the once the uh, impact point like they were you know when you hear about chernobyl or you hear Hiroshima or Nagasaki, well, the bombs and the it, it spreads like thousands of miles. So it's like I don't know how they're not affected, but that, the mean, once again, this is they could be not affected like by the actual physical effects of the bomb if they're far enough away. Mm-hmm. Like they're in the middle of nowhere, so bomb could go off in major cities, which is most likely population centers where people would bomb, and mm-hmm. then they just they're cut off from everything. So over the course of ten years. It does seem like it's been a little bit longer than 10 years, but over the course of time, yeah. you're cut off from all these things that you're used to having to survive. And you just, you, you got to revert back to simpler time where you, I mean, they do well, mention uh, horses pull your car. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they, do, they do mention the fact that like the rain is coming in and that would mm-hmm. kick off, kick up radiation. So they'd have to like stand or cover. And, oh you know. yeah. And yeah, they get, I guess that part is irradiated because they said that, uh, like the crops and stuff. maybe they didn't start there. Maybe they all just kind of, they like came together. He went on a pilgrimage yeah. across the yeah. wasteland and picked up people. On right. The road, and that's where they he found it. He found a young this kid. Is our and they, home. Were... <laughs> they, they traveled towards this dark tower. Um, that's his, it, it's just interesting. Yeah. You just got that reference. Yeah. Um, uh, no, you know it's funny. Like the one of the two major cities that would be bombed are, of course, Columbus, Ohio, and Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida, because of the tourists, and Columbus, Ohio, because it's a huge network of uh, um, traveling through roads for you know tractor trailers and stuff like that. I'm like I'm screwed either way. I mean, I'm near I'm near Orlando, and I used to live in Columbus, so um, I don't know. We're screwed, Rob. You guys are fine. You know, they don't really. I think bomb. I don't think they'll bomb the bridge in Selma. And uh, in my, cornfields. I've always That's said, true. on a side note, if anybody, I, actually, my dad said this to me: if, if uh, terrorists truly wanted to instill terror in the world, in like our country, totally, mm. or in any country, 
stop bombing major cities. Go bomb like the middle of fucking nowhere. Like I'm random where I live. And that would terrify the shit out of people because right now I do. I feel like I'm like, shit, if the nukes drop, I'm good. I mean, they're yeah. going to suck, but I'm going to live, you know. I mean, you survive you without like, it. get hit anywhere. It's like <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. Exactly. I mean, aren't you surviving without AC right now anyway? So I think you'd be good, right, down in the basement? I mean, my house has AC, but this floor does not. Yeah. I have like... I mean... I have a, a solution at the moment that's working, but <laughs> yeah, I'm surviving. I'm I'm roughing it for sure. So they eat all the food, even though Goldsmith doesn't want them to. Goldsmith breaks a bottle of alcohol. He's like, "Well, you, yeah, we have hundreds of bottles of alcohol, so you know, you're gonna, it's gonna take you a while to destroy all of them." Ninety-nine. But I like here on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, it, it's all leading to the eventual point where they're going to make goldsmith open up the door but i like i like the, the discussions that you know um what's his name uh who was the other guy the other jason uh, jason he has that discussion with french and they have like a real kind of down-to-earth discussion about you know what happened before and how things have led to where they're at i think the idea of like telling goldsmith that he's going to hang him off the side of a building it's pretty dark that's some dark shit right there but that's twilight zone for you but i just like how they're like from them rafters right there (laughs) right if you don't (laughs) shape up and ship out properly and give us you know the deed to the town or something all they need is doc brown and you know marty mcfly to set things straight but give us yeah i just i I, of food laying over in the ground right (laughs) they probably like Worried about getting knocked into a thing of manure or something, but uh, I don't know. Um, really, it's all to lead up to the payoff point where French has basically got these individuals to uh secede that he is kind of the ruler now of this town. They're eating, they've kind of the herd mentality has transformed them into you know the the people worshiping a golden idol, idol or something like that, or people worshiping, and you know, I don't know. You guys agree, disagree? How do you guys feel? Is it, they is go it to tingle your cockles? The government. What well, you gotta worship the government. So is it very twenty twenty four in yeah. that respect? And, and Goldsmith yeah. is like all against the establishment, against the man. <laughs> he's Absolutely. the uh, he's he's gonna be an easy rider here soon. He's just gonna, you know <laughs> fight the power, <laughs> Goldsmith. Woo Jacob, your your power glove is making me laugh, by the way. It's so no. bad. <laughs> So hacker man <laughs> does that actually work I by the way? The other day. yeah i mean so i ain't gonna use it for anything i might as well wear it sometimes <laughs> <laughs> it works like, like it's intended which oh, is yeah. not good <laughs> didn't it only work it's for like one shit. game it just looks cool like, no, it works with any game mm, it was designed I heard for the... a few games but like you can use it with any game but it sucks <laughs> it sucked back like robbie the robot now. That thing's like friggin' uh, Boston Dynamics robot compared to this piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, I mean, but what do you guys think about like the more down to earth approach before like the big reveal where they're just kind of partying, being normal people in a world that's not normal? Like that's some. I think that was pretty good writing. I was. I really appreciate that they kind of took the time in this twenty two minute episode to kind of settle down a little bit before all hell breaks loose. I don't know. I, I do think. wish, like uh, Robin mentioned, I think it would have been really cool if they. It, this is one we talk about this a lot of episodes, but I didn't even think about it. Rob brought it up this time was this would have benefited or could have benefited from uh, more fleshing out being longer. Not that I think it's bad the way it is, but like such as that situation you're talking about, and he was talking about where they're talking. I think we really could have had some sympathy for this character that's the antagonist. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you think it moves too fast then? No, I don't think it moves. I I think they did very well with the time they had. But I'm saying if they had an hour, they had an hour, they could have totally screwed it up. But if they had an hour, they could have (laughs) made it even better. There is the opportunity there. Some some show or some episodes we see and we're like, there's no reason this needed to be any longer. It was perfect the way it was. This one, I think, is great the way it is. But if they had more time to add to it, I think it could have made it even possibly better and added a lot more layers to it that are hinted at like that conversation there that really doesn't go anywhere but it could have i kind of i appreciated what they were trying to do but 
like taking it into the like you know the golden fleece and all that kind of stuff it, it kind of didn't i understand what they were going for but it didn't really like it was out of nowhere like you say and i the, the normal conversations that's great you get you get to people that are able to have like a normal discussion like nothing had happened but the way it went you know talking about being college educated and all that stuff and the kind of mythology aspect it didn't really do anything per se like it's not a conversation two normal people are gonna have you know but i guess what is normal when you're talking apocalypse i think they were trying to hint at just hint at some normality Oh, I I get that. And I just I wish they had, had chosen been, other. Yeah, well, as it stands, I don't think it really does anything mm-hmm. except pique your interest as to what could have been. But I do I agree with Rob on that. Like well, as it stands, I don't think it does much. But it opened the door or cracked yeah. the door for a lot more opportunity. So it was almost like they were saying, "Ha, huh, remember those hour long episodes? They were they would have been good, <laughs> even though Russell was <laughs> against them. But whatever. Yeah. I, so I think that it's um. It's definitely an episode that you can see the story is something that, you know, like you were talking about Negan and the walking dead where they have whole series about people's being changed by an apocalypse and how they change. And I feel like that little short conversation about, Oh, I was in college and things like that was just like their little hint of doing it. But maybe in that day, you know, they, they go, Oh, we couldn't do a whole series on this. Where would we go with it? We'll just, throw in a line and people will understand that this world has changed this guy who was a college student to now uh, this, you know, guy murderous. He's just a bad guy. Soldier. Yeah. I think it could have transformed him into, instead of just being a bad guy, they could have transferred him into good person that does bad things mm-hmm. based on the situation. And that would, while you still disagree with the things he was doing, you would be more sympathetic towards him. But it also, it also leads to the simple fact that, He's very um he's not the smartest guy in the world because clearly he clearly he doesn't realize what's happening. French's character too. I think he's a, a little misguided in that realm because you know, clearly confident. yeah, that yeah, exactly. His he has, you know, gigantic balls or something, you know. I think he's dumb. I just think he's over he's overconfident <laughs> and he thinks very highly of himself and he thinks mm-hmm. it's just some country bunking town with some idiots that are looking for something to believe in right he 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 decided to to look in the box you know there's no fish in the box he was that kind of guy yeah took the box and said the one of paltrow's head maybe i went to college line wasn't meant to humanize or sympath sympathize with them maybe in those days it was like oh i went to college and it was meant to be more snooty superiority he should have said it like old james coburn I went to college. I went to college. Did you go to college? No. <laughs> He's like, he, he, yeah, even in death, he was still paying college. off that. <laughs> even in death, he was still paying off that six hundred dollar college scholarship that he had, or the loan that he had. It was like eight hundred thousand dollars today's money. You know, um, I don't know. Um, it leads to which we've been which we've been kind of avoiding talking about because we won't wait till the end to the real purpose of this episode to why they should have listened to goldsmith and why sometimes you, your faith can be questioned but sometimes maybe it's for the best to not not question these things because you know apparently he has the the button down in the rock somewhere like a fake rock so you know nobody can figure out where it's at i don't know something like straight out of like national treasure or some nonsense but they all walk into the cave and they see the craziest thing ever. They see, you know, a dog and a cat living together. It was a mass hysteria. You know, they're worshiping a, you know, a tabby cat and a, um, I don't know, Rottweiler or something like that who have cat kid, cat baby dogs and all that good stuff. But I don't know. In all honesty, well, the it leads into. You saw the director's cut. I, I did. <laughs> I, I saw the, yeah, I did. Uh, but no, in all honesty, it leads them to the realization that <laughs> the old man in the cave is man. really just a guy in a, is an Amish guy with a Santa no beard, head. you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, no head. He disappears into the shadows. It was really <laughs> Luke Skywalker, you know, or Snoke. No, no, in all honesty, it really is just the old man in the cave is a computer, a gigantic processor unit that is, uh, you know, like the 60s, what the 60s is known for is, how computers were, uh, Giant. you know, not really well known because it's just a gigantic box with beeping lights and, you know, just boop, boop, beep, 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 bop, boop, 
you know, that type somehow of thing. powered and, in a cave. Is that, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. I'm gonna, I, I have so many questions, but I've been trying to wait. Uh, <laughs> I, you don't, you don't need any answers because they just destroy it right away. They don't even nuclear think about powers. it. Just, <laughs> nuclear powers. Nuclear power. Power. God. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the I thing really from Total Recall. <laughs> a big I mean, they did cover. They did cover the thing with the with the really heavy metal door. So it's probably mm. something that would have survived a nuclear blast. They just didn't like notice the big uh, or something. Yeah. Right. They just didn't know the big those the big satellite dish that's just up there. There's a uh, nuclear the, uh, power plant down in there somewhere. Yeah. The atomic they reactor. Didn't... Oh, you know what? What if this <laughs> what if this computer caused the nuclear war or the fallout? Skynet, the computer Skynet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, they actually walk in there and they see uh, John Connor and whoever Claire Danes played in uh, Rise of Machines. They're like, we were out here the whole time. And they're like, oh, I don't know. We just wanted to make kids. So we needed, uh, you know, whatever, John Connor or whatever, Kyle Reese or whatever. You know, I'm um, sad that they didn't have, you know, made, behind the make. Long. I'm sad that they didn't have, you know, a, a femme computer bet- behind the regular computer. That you mm. know made them say, "Okay, all the men must die of snoo snoo." Well, you female, know, female computer on like a little with on wheels. They've been like talking like this, playing actually, that. Actually, it was voiced by uh, Joan Rivers. So yeah, you're not far off. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> good old, good old plankton. But I, I just like before they before they have questions, they they're just now like animalistic and they're just destroying the hell out of it. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, yeah, they're just like torches and what could we do with this? We could fucking break it. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good to me. <laughs> James Coburn's like, I'm a man. I don't need a fucking computer. I'm a man and a man. And he didn't realize what 2024 was gonna bring us. So I like how everybody was just like, What what is that? And he walks in, he goes, Yeah, it's a computer. <laughs> <laughs> like nowadays they would walk in and it'd be like a fucking I Acer laptop. So. <laughs> just sitting on like a little yeah it'd be a, a smartphone it, it'd be, and they it'd found be, uh, out all these messages were just like horoscope of the, the week or something <laughs> it'd be an Acer laptop I... uh, uh, Acer laptop uh, um, uh, sponsored by Walmart or some shit or sponsored yeah. by Ooh, the Nigerian like it's just messages from the yeah. Nigerian oh, yeah. prince <laughs> <laughs> It wouldn't be the old man in the cave. It'd be the prince in the cave. <laughs> and You're like, oh my God, the emails were this. right. <laughs> this uh, would be amazing. They need to remake this. Right. Uh, yeah, the other question I have is like, where is this computer getting this information about how the crops and it knows where the crops are? Is, is this like fucking okay. owl or what's going it. on here? Okay, that, answer, I, answer. So that that's where that comes into where I was saying earlier, I don't blame the writers. And yeah, uh, people of the day, I don't blame the people of the day of not knowing because what I was alluding to earlier was in the beginning he comes down and he he reads off the printout of mm. uh the weather forecast and you know he reads off some information from the old man and it's just super computer. I can't remember specifically how it was, but it was just like a computer said that, which I will give them this much for a time because it was 1964. For a time when computers just, especially in the major populace, were not, they were this mystical thing. They Mm. wrote something, a writer wrote that, not a computer, but they wrote something that sounded like it came out of a computer even nowadays, but uh, prior to AI. But I I don't, people didn't know, they, they, computers were just this mystical thing. They could do anything. So the question of like, because I asked that, you know, how, is this computer like testing the soil does it have like weather radar or something? What's going on here? And I mean, it it doesn't explain it because they don't know. The people that wrote it were just like, well, computers, they can do anything. So like it's it just, just like they know. know. Yeah, they they just they know they compute things and they know. So it is kind of it's a little bit mystical in that way. So sure, I wonder now we have a much more robust uh, uh view of what computers are capable of and how they work back then no mm. it's just like oh it's a computer that i mean yeah they're they're yeah. big computer tapes are like the spinning fucking circles and a real to real yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no the, my, my favorite joke about um the use of computers uh in like that early days is in willy wonka and the chocolate factory when they're trying to figure out where the next chocolate bar can be found and it's the computers being sassy back to them <laughs> <laughs> 
that's what it, they walked into that all right <laughs> it's a, i'm a computer <laughs> the computer's like the, the computer's like <laughs> like that kid wrapped up and the indian's going oh, oh. <laughs> i'm surprised um, they didn't give the computer a voice because like it seems like sci-fi stuff with computers back in in, in the 60s yeah. and stuff oh well, i do that again. i think they're trying voice. to stay realistic yeah. as realistic as I, yeah i gotta give credit realistically that just didn't mm. that's not how it was then but i do gotta give credit to the twilight zone for restraint because like if this has been in, like a high concept tv series that wasn't the twilight zone it would have talking i mean the oh, farthest they went the with robot. talking Please don't, exactly. don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. exterminate <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what I say. the The farthest they went with like technology and talking computers was like you know the the lonely or the elegy when it was just like a man and a you know a, a robot man. But when it comes to actual computers, I mean, it's just lights and beeps, and it's exactly what a computer does. It's just information being transmitted over you know, whatever. But the restraint that they they held on computer technology and technology in general was actually quite impressive. I mean, Especially the, when they the beat the hell out of that thing. Back then, I'm not gonna say they didn't have any way of inputting information like autonomously, like with like sensors and stuff. But most computers back then, in order to get information out, you had to input information. It computed. They they took A and B and gave you C. You know, it, it would compute information just quickly. And 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 you know, who's putting the info in? Well, and that's what kind it's of a computer. That, that's kind of what I. <laughs> It's been a long time since I've seen this episode. I remember what the ending was like. It's a pretty well-known, you know, cultural ending. But um, I, I I had forgotten the fact that Goldsmith wasn't someone that understood computers. Like I I, yeah. I could imagine him being someone that would input like you know this is the temperature, this is this, this is that. What is going to come of the weather? And mm -hmm. kind of you know best guess back However at him. I do. I, I appreciate there. There is that part of me right now that's like, oh, I would have liked an hour long episode and they would have explained more like what was this place? Why is this computer here? What's its function? How's it work? I want to know all the information. But I find that a lot of the times when we get all that information in these things, it's nowhere near as fulfilling as to just being kind of vague because I feel as if it kind of put it put us in their place. They don't know. Neither do we. Right. Nobody knows. It's a computer. It's obviously man. It's a cave, but it's you know there's that friggin' door and everything. It's obviously man-made. It's not too far out of the realm of possibility that some type of military installation or something like that. We don't need to know. And I think sometimes not knowing is better than knowing because once you start explaining, you have to go into great detail, and it's never enough detail, and you're gonna make mistakes. Here, it's just kind of like it's it's a computer. Not and, knowing is half the battle. Yeah, and 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 Pork computer chop sandwiches. Is a mystical thing that. I think most people just accepted it at that point. They're like, oh, well, yeah. Computers, they do that. Yeah. Duh. They do. Duh, everything. man. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. that, Nick. You wore your computer shirt. C for computer. Oh, you know, I, 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 I <laughs> yeah. do what I can. Well, and yeah. also, they don't quite honestly where the computer came from, how it works, all that, all those questions. That's not really what it's about. Yeah. That's not what the story's about. The no, story's... It's, yeah, it's just a cool like little piece to the yeah, puzzle. It, it, if it had been a a friggin' angel up there, or just it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. It's just a piece. So I do appreciate them. I think you said practice restraint. I think they practice restraint there and not give some type of even a half-assed explanation as to mm -hmm. what's going on. It's just a computer. I think it's well, that's what I... closing narration. I mean, I know you're gonna go over it, but where they mention it was about testing faith right well that's the so, thing i um i like is like that would be the big reveal but they're like no we're actually going to end the story with the kind of setup that was happening throughout the entire story like we have all this foreshadowing happen with goldsmith and talking about blah 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 and then you think oh no the computer thing is going to be the big end point the end the end moment but it's like nope we're going to have this small segment that where rod Stone is going to do over his clothing narration where it's like Oh no, you remember all those people that didn't heed the warning of what Goldsmith was saying? Oh no, no, they're all dead now. It's like, oh my god, it's like, you know, when corrupt absolute corrupt or corrupt absolute corrupts absolute all. corruption <laughs> corrupts absolutely. Thank you. Tongue twister that I can I can never remember that expression, but it's like the idea of like, oh, they try if they had just heeded the warning, they would not all be dead at this point, but they're they're all dead, leaving Goldsmith to just kind of walk away and 
I know. I like I like that. I think that helps the episode. I keep hearing Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he says Goldsmith, I hear Will Smith. Like, Last Man on Earth remake. Is that mean when <laughs> right? Is that mean when I say Will Smith, you're gonna say, Oh, I hear Goldsmith now. Maybe no, I still hear Will Smith, but oh geez. We'll see where it goes. Eh. <laughs> uh but Gold Smith. Um <laughs> no, okay. Uh <laughs> But that that's kind of the end of the episode. It's just he kind of walks off into whatever next town he's going to bring a computer into the world with. But he's kind of doing the uh, Bruce Banner thing from the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, yeah, he's like, like the guy from, from Kung Fu. It's gonna be. Can you imagine how many other towns are like they have computers they just don't know it. He just is pulling the computer. To- <laughs> <laughs> like- yeah, he walks into it. It's like it's like uh, needful things. He just walks in, creates or uh, you know has this place. I don't know. Um, I think it's, yeah, I agree, with Jacob and you guys. It's a it's a pretty good episode. I don't know where we're gonna rank it, but did you guys have any like final thoughts on the episode? Anything that you wanted to bring up that we didn't talk about? Anything good with the world? Uh, Anybody? I- I don't have anything necessarily more to add to, but I do think this is an episode that you could critique and talk about all the little possibilities and ins and outs and subtext Mm -hmm. and everything for probably hours and hours on end. Why was this? What was that? What did this mean? What did this, you know, relate to what parallel was here? Because I feel like there's a lot of them and some of them definitely, I mean, hell, it says it even faith were had some religious subtext. As far, maybe not religious, but uh, subtext to religious stories, um, mm. such as uh, the Ten Commandments. But that has another name. That situation right there, it was in the Ten Commandments. I knew, like, I know that, but it wasn't Sodom and Gomorrah, obviously. But it, wh- whatever, the thing with the bull. I mean, it was attempting of the. There was something yeah, about tempting of the of people, the, but yeah, didn't the situation. I don't. Know, whatever Hang we on. all talk about, but like all you that, know, kind of stuff, and there were other other parallels from uh, uh faith and religion and and even beyond just religion just faith in general having faith in something and believing in something that has taken care of you i mean you could go all the way down to like you could say there's a parental side of it like children having faith in their uh their parents always leading them the right way but then something comes along to tempt them that uh that their parent that they're supposed to have faith in is sitting there saying no don't do this and then this tantalizing temp- temptress comes along and tempts him to go the wrong way and as Triv eloquently put you fuck around and find out right right <laughs> but yeah I think there's like a, for- I think it was a great episode I really like um I mean I'm interested to see where we're gonna put it because I think it's gonna in my opinion it should be high up there I think it was a really good episode it's one of the few episodes that I knew what was going to happen way in advance and I still think it held up like not because I'd seen it but like I caught it but I do not hold that against it in the slightest. It is one of the few episodes that even though I caught it, it's just because it's a, a product of its time. Not because I, I feel like they wouldn't did at that point in time did not have to hide some of the things that stood out to me because they, they weren't, there's no way they'd know. They wouldn't know that they needed to hide the way this computer talked because nobody knew computers talked that way. Not really. It wasn't in the zeitgeist. So a fantastic episode. I thought Jacob, was it the worship of the golden calf? Was that what you're thinking I think of? That's it. Yeah, something yeah. like that. That makes more sense. Like Ten Commandments is, I think, we're, that's the name of the movie, obviously. Yeah. Well, that I mean, I just say Ten Commandments because it's easier for people. I mean, when we talk yeah, about the Heston movie, yeah, when we talk yeah. about the actual kind of history, yeah, the Golden Calf is like a whole thing by itself, and yeah, false idols. Yep. Yeah, false, yeah, false there idols. You go. Yeah, false idols, Golden Calf, all that stuff. Um, see, I'm not a total uncultured buffoon uh but yeah that's that uncultured swine i'd say that that's the <laughs> most surface level parallel that it draws from like for mm. sure but i think that you could you could just keep going deeper and deeper with this thing it's 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 a fascinating episode i'll say Very one cool. thing i wrote down that we didn't talk about was the soldiers all look like they had apple vision pro headsets on <laughs> oh yeah yeah i noticed that yeah yeah <laughs> Their it's goggles. funny when I was oh, like, oh yeah, the was like those look like yeah. Apple VR <laughs> headsets. So very well funded military that the, this new uh, regime has. No, it's just early. He predicted well, Apple yeah. wearing overpriced VR headsets or AR headsets. They're just right. non-functioning headsets they're wearing yeah. in the future. <laughs> 
Oh man. Uh Triff, do you have anything? No, I'm I'm pretty good. I think I got everything I needed to say out. Triff got it out. She's yep. back and you got everything out. All sure. stuff out. <laughs> Fold it out. Yeah. Shake it off. Shake it off. Uh Taylor Swift. Um, what was I saying? Closing narration. No, uh yes, yeah, closing narration, and then we'll go into the pace magazine thing. <clears throat> Let me pull it up. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Did she? Did she? <laughs> Let me get it up. <laughs> <laughs> the old man <laughs> in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Goldsmith, survivor, an eyewitness to a man's imperfection, an observer of the very human trait of greed, and a con- uh, chronicler of the last chapter, the one reading suicide, not a prediction of what is to be, just a projection of what could be. This has been The Twilight Zone. It's an odd Closing narration. I thought, bit, yeah, I, I, no, like I mean, how he it's says, like it's totally out there. Before, and this is the Twilight Zone. It just kind of jumps around a lot in it, and the, the, like it did. That did not flow like many of his narrations do. wasn't awful, but it just had some breaks. And he's like, but, "Let's get this series over with." Yeah, <laughs> done with this. Yeah, shit. I, I'd, I'd be sure he was. He was just like, "I'm tired." He, he's like um, Madeline Kahn and um, Blazing Shadows, like. I'm tired. I'm tired. They're always coming and going. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it. From the waist down, I'm kaput. <laughs> <laughs> she he's just uh major French is just bouncing a, a paddle. A ball on structure. Uh Trib, give us uh the uh, Pace magazine INDB. Uh what they said. Well, do you guys have any ideas where this might have come in? Number two. Say hi. I don't know about that high, but I think it's high. 17. Like like 20s high or like 70s high? Like low high. Good high. 69 high. Ooh, 69 boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, frankly, uh, IMDb put this in at 62 and Paste has it Damn. at 52. Really? Yeah. I just figured it'd be higher. I was thinking maybe 30s. Not in this case. I mean, not that like for them. you know. Yeah. Well, they're stupid. <laughs> what's above? What's above, old man? The cave and paste. Hang on, let me check here. Uh, this will explain a lot. So right above it. Dangle. Yeah, there you go. Dangle. Um. So yeah, Dangle. stop over in a, in a quiet town is fifty. Uh, the shelter is fifty-one. Old Boo. man is fifty-two. Six oh, <laughs> God, sixteen millimeter shrine is fifty three. <laughs> and oh, Nick, Nick, Nick. Yeah. Walking distance is fifty four. Why, crackheads? So they they kind of say with this that um, James Coburn adds a lot of spice to Serling's script. Um, uh, when the people rise up and demand accountability from the man, will they achieve their independence or confront their doom? Uh, let's see. The script is directed with much moral ambiguity as possible, giving depth to the material. So there's nothing really bad stated about it. You know, it's just kind of, yeah, I don't know. Like I, for the stuff around it, I feel like it should have been higher, but oh, well, that's why they, that's what happens when they don't dangle true they can hang they, but they don't know how to dangle they aim Crazy. too far to the left or they they lean too right. far to the left or the right they got Either up way. and they, they they peed too far to the left yeah the, the one everywhere. ball hangs too far what to the one side do. and the other ball hangs too far to the other side exactly and the ball kind of hairy down ball move yep okay so let's get into the ending of this podcast called the closing or the closing narration the see what you guys did to me i called the Twilight Zone ranking list, the greatest ranking list to ever hide in a cave. Um, okay, where are we putting this? Um, number two. No. No, not number two. Number one, then. No. No. Jacob, Jacob is looking at his watch. Where, where did you put the list? <laughs> it's on Twitter. I sent it to your tr- oh. Twitter. Oh, okay. I could see this going. Um. Ah, I see. Above. Is this? 
like better than the grave a world of his own i was just gonna say i think this is between like like 20 23 and 33 i would say 23 and 33 let me get that that's my point with it 23 is uh so number 40 number 43 then nick of time i think it's better than nick of time world of his own final of the first season yeah yeah the grave wasn't james coburn in that one no, that was, no, was Lee, uh, Marvin. Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin, yeah, yeah. No, uh, sorry, Lee fucking Marvin. Lee yeah, motherfucking no, Marvin. Lee motherfucking Marvin. Once yeah, upon a go. time, which one is that? That was uh, uh, Buster Keaton. Oh yeah, I think that this one's as I go up, silence, little people. I think this one is better than those. Really? Um, like Nick of Time, World of His Own. Yeah, I think it's better than those. Jacob, is it better? Nightmare as a Child. I yeah, I think. See, you um, said we never talk about nightmares as a child, so I had to bring it up. We're, not there yet. <laughs> we're working our way there. I really like the passage on the Lady Anne, though. I thought that was a really great episode. Um, I think it's better than Printer's Devil. I know Triv loved that episode. I do. I, I love really that like episode. It. I mean, I, I like is it. it. I like it. Is it better than Five Characters in Search of a a popcorn tin Ooh, that's quintessential <laughs> twilight zone right there man well so is this though you look at if you're going up and to play devil's advocate i think it if is. you're gonna you look at the the amount of pop culture references that this has and obviously that's only one way to look at it this is this is pretty across pop culture there's a lot of references back to this episode yeah so if you're going from the perspective of well-known and quintessential twilight zone then that's i mean Five characters is is that so is this? I think it's better than it's a good life, which somehow is above five characters. Yeah, it's a good life should be down in the that seat. was all you guys. I tried to get I, once again. I tried to get five characters higher, That's but you guys fair. didn't want it that high. Because I I, I, I I remember that specifically. That. I had a very hard time separating the movie version, which I thought was great, the Joe Dante one, and the show. I actually even yeah. said I don't think the show version, the episode was as good as the movie version, but I can't help just I can't separate the two. So <laughs> we gotta wait, we gotta wait for we gotta wait for Trip to stop dying. Is he okay, is he blue or green because I'm colorblind, which I am, or because of the green screen? Or is it's, that just the color? It's blue. Well, it's oh, gray. It? It's black and white, but it's blue because I have a blue oh, light. Oh, black and white. Okay, I guess, yeah. I see color is weird. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm over it. <laughs> um, oh, God. Sorry. While Triv's dying, I would put this like in the silence to the grave area. Or between Passage of Lady Anne and the Grave or something like that. I'd be good with that. You know, it's weird. Just one more one more real quick thing on It's a Wonderful or It's a Good Life. I didn't really, like, I, I like the episode okay, but I, I really don't know how it got that high. Because I'm kind of with you guys. I'm It's an okay episode, but it's certainly not, like, end-all, yeah. be-all favorite. I don't feel like I championed for that one to be that high. I think that was a, a, a misprint. We're going to have to rewatch that episode. We need to. I'm going to need to figure out whose fault this was. <laughs> it's probably like I'll everything else. Blame. It's probably my fault. I mean, I'm okay with around 23 with Passage of Lady Anne. I do think that I would put it maybe a few higher. I don't go too much higher because you get up to like miniature. I like this one more. Trade ins right in there is where I start saying, eh, like the real Martian stand up. I probably would put that above this death ship above the shadow. So yeah, definitely not any higher than 17 higher is in good higher. And really I'd probably put it around 18, 19, but if we go with like 23, I mean, I'm not going to be heartbroken or well, that 23 area that you guys are talking yeah. about. I'd be good putting an under passage of, of lady Anne. Rob, I'm do you sure have thoughts on somebody who I, I'm, I'm sure who hasn't watched like 90% of these episodes recently? Yes. <laughs> yeah, man. I agree. You agree? You agree with all of it? Everything and everything? So you guys want to put oh, it on right above Nick of Time? I think so, yeah. Between Passage and Nick of Time. It does feel like a 20 in the 20s to me. Yeah. I agree. This, it's yeah, a good life is... is throwing me off though, man. It don't need to be there. Every day I'm like, okay, yeah, I can get down with it. it's a good life. It's better than that. 
Then let's put it at twenty. We'll put it above. Looking. We'll put it above. A, it's a good life. I'm making. A, then we put I'm it making... above. Then you're putting it above five characters in search. Yeah, of but a then there's five characters ten. instead of a. I do think that, that that's a tremendous episode. All right, then below, then between five, as much. I I prefer Printer Devil to this, but I know you guys like this one better. So let's put it between five characters and Printer Devil. But then I thought you wanted above below Passage of Lady Anne. I did, but. I mean, you guys like it more, so you know what is you two like, spaces. You think it should be below? I agree. You think it should be below uh, uh, Printer Devil? I do, but yeah. that's me. I'm I'm very subjective, and I just yeah. I really like Nick. Yeah. Do you think it should be below Printer Devil? I don't care at this point because it's just it works either way. I mean, if you want it below, I mean, at this point we're we're no. semantics type of thing. So that is fair. Do Sorry, you like yeah. the Congress does. I agree. They're asking questions. <laughs> yes or no? Um, I mean, below or above? As is so. Rob. Is we'll, also we'll make Rob above. say that, like, below or above. He's going to say yes. <laughs> yes. Well, if I'm going to give the political answer, then I would say that we have to go back and think about how we got to this road <laughs> in the first place. And I don't I know. I have all the information right now to make that decision. We're talking about computers. And the thing about computers <laughs> <laughs> is that they can they can improve our daily lives. This is a fake and, podcast. And is what, it was is a guy saying? named Alan Turing. <laughs> he did computers. That's Back what she said. computers they screw bulbs in. And computers <laughs> compute things. But I would say yes. <laughs> there you go. I so so, so I would all right. So below printer's devil. Thought. Yeah, I would put it below printer's devil. I think. There you go. Two people said it. Two. It goes below. That's how there democracy works. Yeah. As, uh, hey, I don't know, but the monsters do it in Maple Street. Democracy didn't work on that one. There. What? Is it? Is it the old man in the cave, or is it just old man in the cave? I don't know which. It is the old man in the cave. That's, That's what the Wikipedia old man has. in the cave. But like, I think um, Paramount Plus mm-hmm. had it just as oh, old man in the cave. Let me see what my. Well, the the the, the 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 at the beginning of that doesn't really add anything one way or the other. I mean, that's well, no, I gotta have it correct on the on the on the, on the list, make it right. Ah. Old man yeah. in the cave, though. Let me see. On exactly. the old man in the cave, though. They list it as <laughs> the old man in the cave, and that's pulled from IMDb, I think, or TVDB, right. or a little bit of both. I think that sounds about right. That's what I think. Um. All right, it's cool. We'll do it there. So, with that said, in the annals of our podcast list that <laughs> does things in annals places and all that good stuff, number twenty three, <laughs> <new laughs> number twenty, the annals, uh, the annals of new number twenty three is the old man in the cave. Number one, so I, I the beholder. Number one hundred twenty seven, the trouble of Templeton. And Next episode. 104 is a piano in the house. <laughs> Why, Jacob? Because it's bad. <laughs> See, Trim, oh. This is why we're glad we had you back. Continue. Because I'm constantly dying. Oh, oh God, yeah. he's still going. Hacker man. <laughs> all right jacob you, jacob are you good i mean yeah he's good he's jacob <laughs> he's just, uh i'm sorry rob they, they have to do that every week now it's apparently imperative everybody Yay. Looks cool. um, it's everybody anyway if Absolutely. you click on exactly. it in your analytics it's going to say most played part of the show <laughs> right there every week yep. what he said <laughs> Um, but anyways, uh, with that said, next week's episode is season five, episode eight called Uncle Simon. Apparently Rod Sterling says this is a completely different episode from what they've ever done ever in the um, next week, whatever. But it's directed by Don Siegel or by Rod Sterling. Stars uh, Cedric Hardwick, Constance Ford, Ian Wolf, and Robbie the Robot. Uh, yeah, Robbie the Robot gets a credit, apparently. Uh, sure. Okay. We'll go with that. Um, but with this, I will look forward to that next week. Uh, Rob. Robbie, the robot, the old man in the cave, the man with the beard. Thank you for coming on. I know it's late. I know you get to work in the morning. You're a good man, Charlie Brown. You're a good man, old man, Charlie Brown. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) I know you. I know you do content sometimes. I know you're busy with your job, and you know 
now talking to me every once in a while but uh <laughs> the content that you have where's that at uh you can follow me on only caves uh it's old <laughs> underscore man 69 is my name uh yeah. or you could go on <laughs> <laughs> you could go on uh x my of name's course. robert dodrell on there i have linked to my website with my films and i post things on there i started posting some of my videos there too so they're on there nice yes good stuff you know tabletop gaming contests that go awry and uh creatures that go awry you do a lot of things that go awry rob you know everything goes black and awry. white yeah black and white shorts that go awry you know that you must like the rye bread called rob awry <laughs> Rob, i hate right. it when black and white shorts go bad right right <laughs> yeah, i get those, cl- yeah, get those stuff, shorts man. cleaned every once in a while yeah uh, but i'll also make you this custom rod serling pop for a thousand dollars exactly <laughs> oh sign me up yeah or <laughs> less i don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways rob look for rob's content there jacob i know you have content um the last time I edited the video, you said you were posting a video about um, you going to a video game conference. And yes. um, did you ever post that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. So where's your other content? You can find the other stuff at Retro Jake XY with an R on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I do have uh, that video that, that Dick was speaking of. It's actually, I'm, I'm finishing it up right now. It'll be done. It'll be up. Uh, this go up next week so probably if, if i'll be done with it like in the next day or two and it'll go up probably next week sometime i'll decide a day that's good and just and it's put it out nobody will watch it you might get boogie 2988 in there oh my you god i saw him there I did, not, I did not speak with him i walked by him i did not get any video of him either he has long hair now yep very curly too yes he, was, he looked very you could with all the people, Jacob, you could have gotten a million there. views on your channel. It would have been I bet. I synergistic. Bet. Could have complained of, yeah, I'm sure they were all bothering. I'm a stormtrooper. No, oh, nice. nice. He encroached on me while I was at the ATM. Oh, I was putting my number in, and I was yeah. doing this, and I just see somebody right here, and it's a stormtrooper with a gun. He's going mocking you me. You tell him this is not, this is not the ATM you're looking for. Get the <laughs> hell away from me. I just kind of went. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> 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 oh man, Got really awkward and. Like I was like, well, why is this guy over here while I'm at the ATM putting my password in all up on me, mocking me, putting numbers in? Because he doesn't mm. have a life otherwise. All right. Yep. Good for but him. But he will miss. You can guarantee that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what she said. He will yes. miss. Um, anyways, Triv, content yes. place, you're back. Uh, where, where content at? Not on my back, weirdly. Um <laughs> Ooh. We'll go to tattoo idea, possibly. Anyway, uh the hell of a here. trash stamp. Yeah. Oh my god. Oof. <laughs> that would not be so good. Uh you can find me here on YouTube at Trivial Theater. Uh I do a wide array of random obscure straight up bad movies. Right now I'm in the middle of starting a new series that I'm doing called Rift Stravaganza, um, to celebrate my five year. Uh basically doing PSA and uh training video riffs with a variety of creators and friends of my channel. Uh my second one is going up will go up the Monday before this post for, for the foreseeable future. It's going to be kind of uh, reviews and these collabs. So uh, stop by and see some really random content. Yeah. Your first one was with a uh, friend of us all narcotic casserole. Yep. Very absolutely. funny. Second one job. is that too. Uh, we were doing a pizza hut. Well, you will have seen it. Uh, it's a pizza hut training video from 1988 and it's freaking hilarious. Nice. What are we doing? Can't wait to watch that. I'm supposed to do some of those, aren't I? You are. I, signed yes. up for that. I don't know how many. Uh, two of them, I think. Uh, we can. I'm doing them through next year, so literally Damn. anytime. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of. <laughs> I don't Sometime know. I just between now and 2030, we're gonna get to this. Thing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, between now I'll and keep now, my yeah. calendar open. Yay. <laughs> I mean, by the time by the time you're done, you'll have just gotten through the PS3 catalog, Jacob. Yeah. There you go. Because there's so Hold many up. games. My catalog. Um. And how about how about myself, you? How for me? Yes. I have nothing. I just live here in the Twilight Zone. No, I uh my content, of course, the yeah. Fifth Dimension podcast. I did a review, spoiler discussion for Deadpool Wolverine, the worst film I've ever seen in my entire life. Not really. Um, I have one for kneecap, which should go up next week or the week of this review or this <laughs> podcast. 
Um, I have other stuff. Um, Snowpiercer. <laughs> and, uh, anyways, so I I have I have Snowpiercer reviews stuff like that. Um, <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna get out of here. It's a late night. Purple. Hey, <laughs> purple, Just the um, anyways, for myself, Jacob, Trip, and Rob, we'll see you guys next time in the Twilight Zone. Peace out, motherfuckers. <laughs> you're talking to a guy uh, yeah. that spent you're talking to a guy that spent money on a for Fur- Furiosa cup that's probably gonna do- just be destroyed in my man. Three I got a Star Wars Rise of Skywalker popcorn bucket and cup. I do too. The, well, yeah, it's my trash can. <laughs> it's big enough. It's like a big one. That's a good trash. Are can. there are there five yeah. characters? Are there five Star Wars characters in that trash can? <laughs> or five Star Trek characters? Nice. Hey, hey, oh, so mine's not metal. Mine's plastic. <laughs> but see, but see, I got that... a metal Justice League. One. <laughs> Trim's dying. I got a metal. But Justice no. League <laughs> like that, though. Oh my god! I'm gonna have to put this at the end now.